more. 1 mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's 6, 0, 2, and then a whole bunch of zeros after it. It's a massive number. Yet, atoms and molecules are so incredibly small that a small bottle of water contains about 28 moles of water molecules. So chemical equations like this one work like recipes. This recipe says mix 2H2 and 1O2 and you get 2H2O. But 2 of what H2? Chemical equations are written in terms of moles. So it says mix 2 moles of H2 molecules and 1 mole of O2 molecules and you get 2 moles of H2O molecules. Now we don't really measure in units of moles in the laboratory. We usually measure the amounts of stuff by measuring mass or volume. These are the units called grams or liters. So we need to be able to convert between moles, grams, and liters. First, let's learn how to convert between moles and the number of things. We are going to use a system called dimensional analysis to perform these conversions. Dimensional analysis uses conversion factors that will cancel out the units we don't want and leave us with the units we do want. Conversion factors are fractions that compare two units to each other. Here's how it works. This question says how many molecules are there in 3.4 moles of water molecules? To use dimensional analysis, we first write the given quantity, 3.4 moles. Next, we multiply it by a conversion factor that compares the new unit to the old unit. A conversion factor is a fraction that's going to compare those two units. Now there are two ways to write this particular conversion factor. We're comparing moles to number of things. In this case, we're comparing it to water molecules. So we can write the fraction as 1 mole per 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 things per 1 mole. The one we want to use will cancel the old unit and leave us with the new unit. It will be the correct conversion factor if the old unit is on the opposite side of the fraction from where it started. 3.4 moles is putting moles on the top part of the fraction since it's written all alone. We just assume that 3.4 moles is over 1. So we're going to use the conversion factor 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per 1 mole because it puts mole on the opposite side. It puts it on the bottom. So the mole is going to cancel and we'll be left with units of molecules. To solve this problem, we take 3.4 moles and we multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. We get an answer of 2.04 times 10 to the 24 molecules of water. Converting between moles and things uses the conversion factor 1 mole per 6.02 times 10 to the 23 or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per 1 mole. Next, let's learn how to convert between mass and moles. The conversion factor that compares the mass of a substance to moles of the substance is found on the periodic table. This is the molar mass. It is the mass of exactly one mole of that particular element. So carbon has a molar mass of 12 grams per mole. That is, one mole of carbon atoms has a mass of exactly 12 grams. We can write the molar mass as 12 grams per one mole or one mole per 12 grams. We usually round up the number on the periodic table to the nearest whole number. If we're dealing with a chemical compound, like H2O, we need to add up all the molar masses of the individual elements to determine the molar mass of the entire compound. You have to keep track of the number of each element. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16 grams per mole, and hydrogen has a molar mass of 1 gram per mole. There are two hydrogens, so we have to multiply the molar mass of hydrogen by 2 and then we can add it to the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole. We get a total of 18 grams per mole. Let's try solving a problem. How many moles of propane is in 17.4 grams of propane? Let's use dimensional analysis. First, we write the given, 17.4 grams. Now, we multiply it by a conversion factor that compares the old unit to the new unit. The conversion factor will be the molar mass of propane. Propane has three carbons and eight hydrogens. The molar mass of carbon is 12, and there are three of them, so 12 times three is 36, plus eight hydrogens. The molar mass of hydrogen is one, and there are eight of them, so eight times one is eight. We get a total of 44 grams per mole. We take 17.4 grams and multiply it by one mole over 44 grams we get an answer of 0.395 moles of propane. 
Finally, we need to be able to convert between the volume of a gas and moles. The reason we need this conversion is because we can't really take the mass of a gas very well in the laboratory, but we can measure the volume of it pretty easily. The cool thing about a gas is that a mole of any gas, no matter what kind of gas it is, will have the same volume. 22.4 liters. You fill up a balloon with any gas and the balloon will inflate to a volume of 22.4 liters. So we can write the conversion factor as one mole per 22.4 liters or 22.4 liters per one mole. How many moles is in 34.5 liters of propane gas? Well, we'll take 34.5 liters and multiply it by the conversion factor one mole over 22.4 liters. We get an answer of 1.54 mole. The common unit between liters, grams, and number of things is the mole. Let's try one more problem. What is the mass of 564 liters of water vapor? You might be thinking, but I don't know a conversion factor between mass and volume. But you do know how to convert from liters to moles, and then from moles to mass. This will take two conversion factors. 564 liters times 1 mole over 22.4 liters times the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams per mole, and we get an answer of 453 grams. Now that we are able to convert to the mole, we can start to see how these conversions will be used in experiments. We learned in a previous lesson how to determine the chemical formula of compounds like H2O, but there can be some pretty complex formulas out there, like the hormone adrenaline. It's C9H13NO3. There is experimental technique that can determine the amount of each individual element in a compound with an unknown formula. These data can be used to determine the percent of each element in the compound, which in turn can be used to determine the formula. Chemists can take a chemical compound and break it apart into its elements, and then they can weigh each of these elements to determine how much mass they contribute to the compound. The mass of each element is compared to the total mass of the compound. This is called the percent composition. Here's an example. 67 grams of a substance containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is decomposed to give 26.8 grams of carbon, 4.5 grams of hydrogen, and 35.7 grams of oxygen. What is the percent composition? This compound is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so we will determine the percent by mass of each. The percent composition can be calculated by this equation. Percent composition equals the mass of the element divided by the mass of the entire compound times 100. Calculate the percent of carbon. We'll take the mass of carbon, which is 26.8 grams, and divide it by the mass of the compound, which is 67 grams. Multiply that by 100, and we get 40%. The percent of hydrogen will be 4.5 grams divided by 67 grams times 100 to give 6.7% and the percent oxygen will be 35.7 grams divided by 67 grams times 100 to give 53.3%. Percent composition isn't a formula. A chemical formula shows the ratio of elements within a chemical compound, like H2O. There are two hydrogen for every one oxygen. There are two kinds of chemical formulas. The molecular formula is the one we're most familiar with. The molecular formula shows the actual number of elements in a compound, C2H4, it's called ethylene, and there are two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms bonded together. And C5H10 is called pentene, and there are five carbon atoms and ten hydrogen atoms bonded together. These compounds have completely different molecular formulas, but they do share something in common. The ratio of carbon to hydrogen atoms is the same. For every one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms. We call the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound the empirical formula. And so the empirical formula of both ethylene and pentene is CH2. If we know the percent composition, we can determine the empirical formula. And if we know the empirical formula, we can determine the molecular formula if we know the molar mass of the actual compound. Let's see how that works. This is the same problem, but we've added an extra step. It says, what is the molecular formula for this compound if the compound has a molar mass of 180 grams? We just determined the percent composition of this compound. So now let's determine the empirical formula. We need to determine the empirical formula in order to figure out the molecular formula. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of elements in the compound. To get this ratio, we need to convert the amounts from percents into moles. We can only compare the amounts of elements if they are in units of moles. First, convert the percents into grams. This is the easiest conversion you'll ever do. All you have to do is change the percent sign to a G. Next, we'll convert the grams to moles. We use the molar mass for the conversion factor, one mole per 
whatever gram we find on the periodic table. The moles of carbon will be 40 grams times 1 mole over 12 grams, which gives us 3.33 moles of carbon. Moles of hydrogen will be 6.7 grams times 1 mole over 1 gram to give 6.7 moles of hydrogen. And the moles of oxygen will be 53.3 grams times 1 mole over 16 grams to get 3.33 moles of oxygen. The ratio is 3.33 carbons to 6.7 hydrogens to 3.33 oxygens. This isn't really the simplest whole number ratio. To get the simplest whole number ratio, we'll divide each of these answers by the smallest one. In this case, carbon and oxygen are equal and the smallest amount at 3.33. So divide everything by 3.33 and we get a ratio of one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. The empirical formula is C1H2O1. Finally, we can get the molecular formula. Remember, the molecular formula is going to be some multiple of the empirical formula. We are given the molar mass of the actual compound. It's 180 grams. So the molar mass of the compound must be some multiple of the molar mass of the empirical formula. We can add up all the molar masses of the elements in the empirical formula to find out the molar mass of the entire empirical formula. So there's one carbon, which has a molar mass of 12, two hydrogens, each with a molar mass of one, and one oxygen with a molar mass of 16. When we add these up, we get a total of 30 grams per mole. The molar mass of the entire compound is 180. So how many times do we multiply 30 to get 180? To figure this out, we'll divide the molar mass by the molar mass in the empirical formula. 180 divided by 30 equals six. The molecular formula is exactly six times bigger than the empirical formula. The molecular formula is C6H12O6. So did you learn everything in this lesson? Well, if you did, you learned that moles are the unit of chemistry and a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Percent composition compares the mass of an element to the mass of the entire compound. The empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. The molecular formula shows the actual number of elements in a chemical compound.